Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and today I thought I would show you a tutorial on using my rubber stamps that are faux postage for elements for your junk journal. So we'll get started right off the bat. I've got the T post, and I've got archival black ink and a scrap of ivory cardstock. And what I'm going to do is stamp out the little postage stamp. Now remember when you're stamping you want to ink it up really well and then press firmly and evenly without rocking and you want to hold it to the paper for a moment so that ink can transfer to the paper. So now we've got a little postage stamp. I'm also going to stamp the tiny library card and I have the admission stamp by Beeline Designs. The first two stamps are mine and the last stamp here that I'm using is from Beeline Designs. When you're at my website, uh, most of them will say by Linda Israel or by Beeline Design. I'm still updating, so if you're confused, just let me know and I will try to answer that question. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do, we're going to zoom in here. I'm going to grab a paintbrush. So I've got a little paintbrush. And what I want to do is color in this image. So first, I'm going to grab the Tattered Angels Garden Tea Party. This is part of the Garden Tea Party subscription box. It's a pretty pink. And I am shaking it up to make sure that mica is up into the liquid. And I know I'm taking the lid off. I'm living on the dangerous side. And I'm going to dip my paintbrush down inside. Now you could spray this into like a little watercolor palette if you want. But I like to do it this way. So now what I'm going to do is I want to paint just a little bit that little flower right in the center. So I'm just kind of dotting it on there. And then I'm going to go around the teapot and paint this in. I like this technique because it's kind of watercolor. You get to add some color to things. You don't have to be a proficient colorer. And I'm gonna clean off my brush. Next, I'm gonna grab the mint. And to me, I, I didn't choose this because it's like that light mint color. I think it reminds me of a true mint when you're in the garden and you look at mint that way. And I'm just going to dot where the leaves are. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll hit this with a heat tool to dry that real fast because I'm going to color in the teapot and I don't want that to bleed. So this is from the add-on kit. This was the Garden Tea Party Mint. And then this is Garden Tea Party Tea. And I'm going to add a little bit of this. I picked this color because it's a light, light, light brown. And it kind of reminds me of tea. So if you like that tea dyed color, this is a great stamp for that. And I just saw a spot that I didn't color in, which was right in the handle of the teapot. So I'm gonna clean my brush and get that. I'll go ahead and fussy cut these out. I like using these Fiskars Easy Touch scissors because I don't have to hurt my hands putting them in the hoop of the handles. It's just a squeeze and it releases when you let go. I'm gonna go ahead and go around the edges with Distressed Ink Walnut Stain. I want to alter the way this one looks. I'm grabbing my little spray box that I like to spray in. And I'm gonna grab the Blue Bells Tattered Angels from the Garden Tea Party and spritz it a couple of times. I let it pool just a little bit so it kind of gives it that oh vintage looks like it's been laying around for a while and I'll hit it with my heat tool to dry it. So it's kind of iridescent. It has that little bit of the grunge on the edge. All right so now I've got the little stamped elements ready. Let's move on. I'm going to make a little holder for my tea postage. So I've got a piece of cardstock. This is two inches by one and three quarter inches. And then I have the tiny Cosmos stamp. And I love this little bitty stamp because it just does so much for being so little. And I'm just going to stamp it around the outside edge. Isn't that super cute? And I went ahead and cut a little piece of paper to go behind my postage stamp. And it measures 
one and a quarter by two, one and a half inches. And I happen to have a scrap of paper and I thought it'd be kind of cute to make this a little accordion fold note. So what I did was it's one inch wide. It was just a scrap. So I just started by laying it on the back side and then folding it over and folding it over until I kind of had an accordion thing. And so I'm going to quickly distress those edges. So here is what I found that I liked about this. I wanted to have this be a little accordion fold. So I'm going to glue this on the back of the postage stamp using that little leftover tab. So I'll just glue this right here on the back of my postage stamp. And then I want to glue this in the center of the purple. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the back and then center this in the middle. So you're probably wondering, why did I make these other two pieces? Well, we're gonna make a pocket and then we're gonna make a secondary pocket. So now I've got this piece that I've gone around the edge with distress inks and we're gonna put it right in the middle, but we're gonna make it a pocket. So I'm just going to put glue down the sides across the bottom. So just a little bit of glue there. And then we're gonna press that into place. Now, if you need to, you can use your bone folder to help smooth that out just a little bit. Okay, so it kind of pops out. So we're going to fix that. And here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to lay this on top of here. And I have one of these little photo holders. And we're going to lay that on here. Now I kind of cheat. So I kind of line this up with my mat. Kind of get it in the center. And then I'm going to lay this right here use my Tim Holtz craft pick and punch a hole here. Close the craft pick so you don't stab yourself. I stabbed myself three times yesterday playing with my craft pick. And then I'm going to grab one of these little tiny brads. Oop, I don't need that many, just one. I'm going to poke it through that hole and I'm going to put it on here and We'll open this up. And since I want this to also be a pocket where I can put stuff behind it, what I'm going to do is grab a couple of scraps of one inch paper by however long. Usually I take old manuals. I used to be an insurance agent and we had continuing education that we had to go do. Well, these manuals are out of date and they're not real interesting as far as paper is concerned, but they are perfect if you have a small piece of paper that you want to turn into a pocket but you don't have quite enough of that same paper well you can use a scrap so we're using my junk and I go about a half inch in I put the glue right on the edge and then I'll put the piece of paper down on the glue and then slide it over and that kind of gets this leading edge glued down and then I'll trim this sometimes this is long enough it is okay good Usually give it a minute or so for that glue to dry. All right, so now what I'm going to do is trim off any excess, go at an angle on the tops. I've already cut the bottoms at corners off. So now I'm just gonna fold this to the back side. And now I have a little element that I can attach. So let's pretend we just wanna attach it to a page. Now I'll look, if this is poking out on the bottom, then I'll use my distress ink to kind of colorize it a little bit. And then this ticket will slide down behind and the tiny library card will fit right inside here. And then you can twist and then pull and you've got this little notepad or, or strip of paper that apparently I glued down too far, but we'll fix it. It's okay, it's junk. So we got this little note that we can pull out and then when we're done, we just slide it back around. And it's not perfect, perfect, but I think it's super cute and a great way to use those scraps 
and your rubber stamps. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing a quick way to use the faux postage stamps that I now offer in my shop. Hey, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, check the description box down below for the items that I used. Know that I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time and on the first Thursday of the month at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Check out my links to my social media where you can find me on Instagram and in Facebook and I have a couple of Facebook groups as well. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Have a fabulous day. Make sure you leave some comments below. Bye.